Wow, look at all this patini stuff. I got patini cylinders, I've got an American patini cylinder, I've got a concert cylinder, a patini concert cylinder, a patini phonograph, which I will do a video on, and a patini parts, I've got a horn, two reproducers. Bettini is amazing. So let's learn a little bit about Bettini. Gini Bettini was an early pioneer in phonographs. So he was a, an Italian who moved to New York uh, in the 1890s. Um, when he was there, he was a huge opera fan. And because of uh, who he was married to and his situation, he was able to meet a lot of famous uh, opera singers. He tried recording some of them on an Edison machine, but he found the results were lacking. So what Bettini did was he designed and invented his own reproducers and recorders called microphonograph. So he invented a microphonograph re uh, reproducer, here are two, and a microphonograph recorder. Part of the reason why his um, phonograph reproducers work so well was they were a more intricate and, and detailed design, much more innovative than Edison or Columbia at the time. And one of his features was what we call, or he called the spider, uh, the, the spider here, which is the stylus is here and it's attached to this thing, which is connected like a spider's legs to the diaphragm. And it's a much bigger diaphragm, which gives it a much bigger sound. And the diaphragm is made of very thin aluminum or brass that has been nickel plated. It's also got all sorts of counterweight things going on. So you can adjust the amount of pressure that the needle puts on the record. And of course there are arms for the different machines because these reproducers were designed to be used on Columbia and um, Edison phonographs or graphophones of the time. He did manufacture some of his own machines. Uh, generally, they were copies of other machines or they were actually, you know, a Columbia or Edison product that he relabeled and uh, put his attachment on. So this one actually is labeled uh, as a Bettini machine. And as I said, I'll do a video on it and you can see some of the details on this reproducer, which is quite a bit different than this one here. So what I'm gonna talk about today is his records. Uh, and I'm gonna focus on the concert record and then I'm gonna do a little bit on uh, the regular size cylinder records. In the late 1890s, um, he had been recording privately some of these opera singers and then people were asking for copies of the cylinders. So he started to produce them pantographically, which meant he took one cylinder and played it uh, which made it to, on a machine that made a copy of it onto another cylinder. And he had actually invented that type of machine for um, copying records. And as Edison and Columbia both had a similar type of mechanism to do that. These records that he duplicated were sold at a cost of about $2 to $6 back then, which is a lot of money because the Edison and Columbia cylinders were selling for 50 cents at the time. So from New York, he went back to uh, Paris in 1898 and opened the Society de Microphonograph Bettini uh, there to start marketing his pro products in Europe. So let's take a look at some of the cylinders here and we're going to hear one. Since I got all of these products set up already, I'll take a scan of a few of them. There's one of the reproducers, just an amazing piece of engineering. There's his cylinder box from Paris. You can see a couple of other cylinder boxes and the tops are a little different. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's a Bettini concert cylinder with the original label. It's hard to read, but we'll get a close up of that. There's another reproducer and the arm for it. There's an American uh, Bettini cylinder and a European Bettini cylinder. There's a horn for Bettini. His horns were a little different than the others. They had this large elbow that was made out of several pieces welded together. There's the Bettini concert cylinders. Uh, they're not in great shape, but you know what? They, so few survived. And unfortunately he took all his molds, apparently, we're not entirely sure of the details, but he apparently took all his molds or the originals, sorry, not the molds, 
uh, to Europe with him, and they got destroyed in World War I. There's the Bettini phonograph that I will do a video on. Okay, so let's move some of this stuff off the table, and we're going to play some of these concert machines and some of the regular cylinders. So I'm ready to play one of the Bettini cylinders. You might be asking yourself, why have I got a machine here that doesn't have a Bettini reproducer on it if I just spoke so highly of the reproducers and uh, his technology? Well, I have a few Bettini reproducers, but the diaphragms get a little loose over time, and I've found that they don't actually sound really good. I have to have them rebuilt. I have heard a rebuilt one, and they sound excellent. This machine is a Columbia graphophone, A.B. McDonald, and I find this machine plays concert cylinders really well. It has the larger Columbia reproducer, which I think sounds the best. Normally you see a lot of these with the smaller one, but I've never thought that they sounded very good. They were the earlier ones. This later reproducer, it sounds much better. So here's the label of the cylinder. I know there's not much you can see there, but it does indicate that it's Bettini cylinder. They typically came in these boxes. Sorry about that, my phone went off while I was filming. So where was I? Okay, this is a typical Bettini box. I know it's a Bettini box, especially because the label actually says Bettini on it. Um, the cylinder looks to be in actually not too bad shape. I'm looking at it and the grooves are a little light, so I don't think they're, uh, that it's gonna be a very loud cylinder. Um, how do I know it's a Bettini cylinder? Well, the Columbia and Edison cylinders of this era had an announcement on it where they said, you know, for the Columbia Phonograph Company or, or for Edison, um, and this one doesn't. It's also not in English. The announcement's not in English. So I believe this to be an original uh, concert or grand size cylinder that's an actual Bettini cylinder that came in this Bettini box. So let me set it up on my machine and let's give it a listen. Okay, that cylinder was obviously someone singing. It sounded a lot like French to me. Um, I just wanted to show you, because I also have these, um, two labels. This one is a label that would typically be on um, the cylinder box. I don't know how well you can see that. And then this label would be one that you would typically see inside the cylinder box. And it says microphonograph Bettini on it. And someone's handwritten something, which is the title there. Okay, I'm actually curious to see what the other cylinders sound like. So if you can bear with me, let's listen to a second cylinder. Okay, here's the second concert cylinder I'm going to play. I just put it on the mandrel. Um, the box is typical Bettini box. And it says clarinet, and there's some other writing, but it's a Bettini box for sure. Um, keep in mind that I know I said he was a big fan of opera, but not all the cylinders are operatic. So let's see if we can get this one to play a bit and see how it sounds.
Okay, there's no better feeling than when you put one of these constant cylinders safely back into its box, put the lid on and put it away where it can't get damaged. Because just sitting here on the machine, I've known, uh, I've had constant cylinders crack because of changing temperatures and they shrink and expand and yeah, then you lose an expensive cylinder. Uh, I'm, you know what, I have three cylinders here that are Bettini concert cylinders. I wanna hear the third one, which means I'm gonna maybe make a video separately for these cylinders, the regular size cylinders, so that this video is not too long. So bear with me, let's try um, and hear this third cylinder. You might notice that the cylinder record doesn't fit all the way on the mandrel. That's because uh, it's shrunk a little bit over time. Uh, thankfully, the Columbia concert machines don't have an end gate. So as a result, um, you can put the cylinder on and leaving it overhanging the uh, mandrel. Uh, let's give it a try. It looks like we stuck it out to the very end with this Bettini video. I'm glad you got here. Um, it's the longest video I'm probably going to be making, but it was really worth it because these cylinders are so rare. And to actually get a chance to see a bunch of them and to hear a few, that's pretty amazing. So I hope you tune into my next video, which is the one on the regular size Bettini cylinders. I'm not going to give all the overview of Bettini, just a, a little bit to bring people up to speed but um, I think it'll be worth hearing.